Hey guys, it's Julie from Julie's Designs. Today is another thrift to treasure video where I take four items I've thrifted and upcycle them for resale. All the items that I'm using in this video today is from the last haul video that I did. And if y'all haven't checked that out, I'll put it in the link below. It was super fun. We went to two thrift stores. We went uh, shopping at Harbor Freight. And then we went to two estate sales. So all this stuff is from the last estate sale that I went to in that video. It was super fun. Y'all go check out that video. And from the uh, stats on that video, I can tell that y'all love to watch me go shopping. So don't worry, in January, I'm going to get back to going shopping a little bit more because, I mean, that's the funnest part of this uh, job is going shopping. And since y'all like it, I might as well do it and film it, right? <laughs> So the first thing is this tarnished silver tray. It at one time had a base or something, and we're going to reimagine it into something else. It is really pretty. I'm not gonna paint it. The tarnish on it is just the way I like it when it's like super dark and not that rainbowy color. And look how good it looks against white. I love this piece. We're gonna give it a new life. And then, I think these are sold already. I have to send a picture when I'm finished with them. When it is this amazing and old and chippy, I don't mess with this stuff. Like, it is hard to recreate it. It's this pretty, like, um, aged gray that people love. So we're going to turn this into candlesticks. They're going to look absolutely amazing in someone's home. Those are going to look fabulous when they're finished up. And then I have these two spindles. So I mentioned that I use spindles to make spindle boxes and a few of you asked, what was a spindle box? And I realized I've never made one on this channel because it is something I've been making for a long time. All my customers know exactly what a spindle box is. It is a great seller. So if you are a reseller, watch this video. You need to make some of these. They sell like hotcakes. So, we're going to make spindle boxes out of these two spindles. I love them because they're symmetrical, but then they have, they each have like a little different uh, piece in the middle. They are absolutely perfect to make a spindle box out of. We're going to do that. And then I have these two crates. And just when I was gathering my items for this video, I came up with the most amazing idea for these. I wasn't going to mess with them too much. But now we will. We are going to turn these little plain crates into something absolutely amazing. This one has a sticker on it that I need to get off. These are going to be so cute. I'm going to make them even cuter. And um, we're going to style them up. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is trim the edges of the spindle. The edges were a little bit rough, so I wanna make sure I have a smooth surface to attach to my piece. Next, I'm going to cut a piece of fence board the same size of my spindle. You want it to be exact same size, so I'm using the spindle to measure, and you wanna cut two pieces like this. And then we're gonna cut the side pieces. I want it to be 16 inches, but this is personal preference. You cut it to whatever size you want. And then I'm gonna turn my miter saw to 45 degrees and just cut some little dog ears on it. If you're using fence boards and just wanna use the top, you can, or if you wanna get your jigsaw out and get a little more fancy, you can also do that. Next, I'm going to give all my pieces a good sanding. You wanna make sure you're using your respirator when you sand this you don't know what kind of stuff has built up on this wood over the years that it's been sitting out so always make sure you're wearing your mask next i'm going to put the piece together you want the sides to go on the outside and then the longer pieces to go to inside that way your spindle fit, fits perfectly at the top and then i'm going to use my 18 uh, gauge brad nailer and start nailing the piece together. I like to do one nail at a time and get the whole piece together. This makes it easier to move around if you need to fix something and then I go back and put more nails in after. For the bottom, I always do it last because every piece ends up being a little bit different 
every piece of wood is unique. So I feel like it's easier to do the bottom last. I just put it under the piece and then draw out the exact size that I need. And then I go to my saw and cut it up and then I'll nail it together just like I did the side pieces. To paint this piece, I'm using ready to use off the shelf antique white flat paint from Walmart. It's about $13 a gallon. And this is what I paint most of my wood pieces with. I put a generous coat on it usually just takes one coat and I also use this to kind of fill in all the nail holes and all that. So all you need is one nice thick coat on your entire piece. Now I'm only getting this one spindle box done today because let me tell y'all what happened. Yesterday, I bent over to pick some off the bed, like hardly even moved and pulled something in my lower back. I was out of commission for the rest of the day. I could barely move. I took it easy. I was hoping I would feel better today, but I didn't really. So I was just kind of moving slow and didn't get as much done as I wanted to, but at least I got one spindle box done for y'all. Next, I'm going to lightly distress the piece. I don't like it overly distressed, so I'm just hitting the edges and just smoothing out all the paint that is on the piece. And I think I'm using 220 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. Okay, now we get to put the spindle on. What I do is I figure out the exact placement on one side and use my 18 gauge nailer and put a nail in and then I get the other side straight centered level and then I put some more nails in and then this piece is done. The first thing I need to do before I start this project is remove the plastic hardware that is on this piece. And then I'm going to sand the top of this piece with my Orville sander just so I have a flat surface to work with. And then I'm going to look around my shop for something round and something that I feel like is the right size for this piece. And I'm going to use that as a guide to cut a circle. I have these leftover thick pieces of cypress from the breadboards that I make. If like it's a nice size cut off, cut off, I always keep it in case I need it for something like this later on. And then I'm going to take my jigsaw and cut these out. This was definitely a little bit more challenging to cut out with my jigsaw because you want to make sure that you are holding on to the piece of wood nice and tight so that your jigsaw doesn't vibrate. So this definitely took like a little bit of time, but I was able to do it and I actually did a very nice circle. I was pretty proud of myself about how round this circle looked because sometimes it is hard to get like a nice round circle on the jigsaw. Okay, next I'm going to take the mix of the gray um, chalk paint and the antiquing wax and try to get the top pieces to look aged like the rest of the piece. So pretty much you can turn any kind of paint into a wash if you just water it down. So there's a lot of gray in this piece and a lot of brown. So I'm just mixing it up. And then once it was dry, I felt like it needed some more gray. So I'm just using the gray chalk paint and just kind of dry brushing the piece to give it a little bit more gray and then coming back with my wet brush and just kind of smoothing it out. So it's just a little bit of trial and error. I know I'm not going to get it exact, but I just wanted to blend into the original piece as much as possible. And then I'm going to take my wood glue and put some glue on the top. And then I like to set my piece of wood on top and then let it dry for a few minutes so it doesn't move and come back with my nail gun and nail it into place.
So to start this project, I needed to remove all the staples at the top and then I needed to give it a quick sanding. They had that sticker on the side and then they had some pencil writing and then they also had a little mud diver nest. So I just gave it a quick sanding just to clean up the whole piece. And then next I'm going to use my Waverly Antiquing Wax mixed with water and just darken it. I didn't like the yellow look of this wood. I just wanted to darken it and give it more of a brown tone. So I'm just going to go on the entire piece and give it a coat of this mixture. This is one of my favorite mixtures. Y'all see, see me use it on almost every single video. And then once that mixture was dry, I wanted to go back and just put a coat of white just on the sides. So I'm just carefully putting a nice thick coat just on the side of this piece. I'm going to distress the edges. So I'm just getting as close as I can, trying not to get it on the sides where I don't want it. And then I also decided to do the top as well. That way from the top, it also has this two-tone look. I also love white and natural wood two-tone look is something I do a lot of and it sells really really well for me. I just feel like it kind of goes with anybody's decor. Okay and then I decided to put a crockery stamp on it because why not? Y'all these stamps are about $28 which you know I'm super cheap so it took me a while to finally order them but they pay for themselves. They immediately elevate the look of everything. Like I know I can ask more for this crate just by putting this crockery stamp on it. It just, like I said, it totally elevates the look. I just have a cheap felt pad ink, um, ink pad from Amazon. I want to get like a more quality ink, but for now this is serving its purpose. And all you do is you place the stamp on the ink pad and then you s place it on your surface. Easy peasy, especially on a flat surface. Now for the tarnished silver tray. This one is going to be really quick and simple. Luckily, I had a piece of wood laying around the shop that was the exact size that I needed. It was the same depth as the silver tray. So I'm putting the tray on top of it and just tracing out the outline of the tray. And then I'm going to cut it out with the jigsaw. And then once it's cut out, I'm going to paint it with the same paint I used with the, on the other projects and very lightly distress it. And then once the paint has dried, I'm going to take my Gorilla Clear Grip Adhesive. This stuff is amazing and should definitely be in your craft closet. It is kind of like E6000, except it doesn't have that smell. I love this stuff. I use it all over my house and with all my projects. So I'm just going to use this to adhere it to the tray because I feel like you're not going to put nothing heavy on here. This glue should be sufficient and I'm just going to attach it to the piece and then you want to let it dry for 24 hours. I love how this piece came out. I'm actually keeping it to put in the girl's bathroom. I love it so much. I'm going to be on the lookout for another one of these trays. I hope y'all enjoyed today's thrift to treasure video. Please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project that I worked on today. If you love these kind of videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I upload these videos every single Monday.